Shalom Rastafari. Um, this is uh, somewhat unexpected, this, um, this particular recording that we're about to make right here and this particular teaching. And this is um, showing the connection between, between the recent storm, this, um, they call it Shocktober, this October surprise storm that has passed through, especially the New York area and also other parts of the country and has caused power outages and disruptions during this particular season. Now, it's important for us to understand and be, well, how can we forget, but let's just be reminded what the season is. This season is, first of all, the so-called Halloween season, All Hallows Eve, Halloween season. People go out trick-or-treating and dressing up as gooblins and goblins and witches. It's all part of the Babylonian matrix <clears throat> as part of the prevailing programming. In fact, it's a, it's a conditioned response. And in psychology, they break this down. They really show how this is. And if you take the same principles from psychology and you overlay them and apply them to what goes on in this society, you really see the evil, something that's an evil programming. But, of course, they don't want to make those connections. They tell us that if you're against witches and, and if you're against um, the so-called uh, Halloween uh, pseudo-festivity, something's wrong with you. This is also part of the new, the new programming. You understand the new programming and conditioned responses. They want to say this is just, it's just fantasy. You understand? It's, it's just fantasy. It's having a good time. It's for the children, so forth and so on. But this uh, storm, unexpected storm, in fact, they said the snow in this particular period of time um, has occurred so early. Usually they expect it much later on. In fact, they say in their recording of history, recent history in this country and the weather forecasting, this has only happened perhaps two to three times, they say three times or so since the Civil War, that there was a snow storm of any particular magnitude. And they say that this might be actually one of the one of the worst ones that they have experienced. And a lot of people are frustrated. A lot of people are very, very frustrated because when did the storm come through this particular area, the northeast, this northeast region of the Great Whale, otherwise known as the United States of America. It occurred Saturday evening, at least in this area, Saturday evening, so say in the Sabbath time, in God's Sabbath, the true Sabbath time. From Friday to Saturday evening, it really got worse around Saturday evening into Sunday, so forth and so on. And even though in this particular area that we're in, most of the snow has melted because this is a low-lying region, this is like a valley here in Brooklyn. But upstate and out in Connecticut and in Jersey and in other parts of the so-called tri-state area and outlying regions, they're still dealing with, if not the snow, they're dealing with the after effects, down power lines, down tree, tree limbs. And, um, they immediately announced, the power companies immediately announced that they couldn't really repair this until Wednesday. And people are very, very frustrated. They're like, how can this happen? They hate this. But why is this so bad for them? Because it interrupts the programming. You understand? It's, it's God's surprise, we can say, quote, end quote. Let's say God's surprise. We're not going to say that God particularly did it, our God did this. But when we look at who is affected, they say um, if you want to find out who committed a crime, they say trace who can um, profit from it. So, so who is responsible for something? Who gains the most from that deed? Well, the evildoers don't gain by this. Definitely not, because it interrupts one of their high holy days for all the pseudo powers that the witches and black magicians and all the rest, the secret society people have. They couldn't stop this particular event. And as some would say, well, they're controlling the weather, the harp, the whole harp thing that goes up, that's going on up there in um, 
so-called the Arctic regions and so forth and so on with uh, all these antennas to control and affect the weather. Well, we don't think that they would want to affect one of their high holiday seasons, so it could be blowback. It could actually blow back. Perhaps they have been tampering with the weather and these, uh, what they call these um, um, chemtrails and everything else. But it's affecting, adversely affecting millions of Halloween worshipers. Millions of Halloween worshipers are in the dark. I mean, they really are in the dark. They really don't have no power. They really are without power. Now, if that wasn't enough, this is also for us as Hebrews and even Jews, um, faithful ones. This is Noah. This is the sabbatical portion and Torah portion reading that's known as Noah or refer referring to Noah. And remember, Noah's time in the Bible has a lot to do with the fallen angels, the fallen demons, and the fallen angels, and the hybrids, and the evil imaginations, the imaginations of wickedness and violence that was going on in those days. Now, our black Lord and Savior, Yeshua HaMoshiach, Adonenu, he told us that in the last days, let's clarify, the last days of the, the Gentile, world dominion, the, gen the rulership of the Gentiles, and these Gentiles update, upgrade so you can understand white supremacy, this, this Anglo-European rulership of the world which has been going on for at least 2,000 years. We could say, some say 6,000 years. The 6,000 years is the, the evil, is, is Satan, Yehun, curse be him. Um, his rulership, but just remember that Satan, before Satan started using white folks in white supremacy, Satan was using black folks or non-white folks. So when we talk about the 6,000-year rulership of the devil, we have to remember that it's not just saying the white man only is susceptible to uh, devilish men. It just so happens that he is the last one, he's the one right now that is in charge or has taken that um, rulership, responsibility you can even call it, to himself since we're living in an Anglo-European construct. This world system is an Anglo-European construct. So just to make it brief, we wanted to make a connection, you understand, or at least point out the connection that's already being made by the events that are happening. First of all, this is the Halloween time. This is Halloween, right? And then the storm, the surprise sudden storm. Then the millions, they said some millions of people, over a million people, I think it may be two, maybe a little less than three million people within a particular region here in the northeast of the United States of America who are out of power in this particular time, 2011, October, Halloween time, 2011. Now, what does that have to do with Noah? Well, Noah was the fallen angels. Well, what does Halloween have to do with the fallen angels? Isn't it obvious? You see, unless you are a victim of this or willing accomplice, you might be a victim. If you say, I'm not a victim, I like this. Well, then you are a willing accomplice. You are a willing accomplice of this evil doing and this inclination to evil. Now, in this particular Torah portion, and we didn't get an opportunity to touch on it um, as of yet, but if you go to, say, the Wikipedia site or other um, uh, Hebrew and, and Jewish Torah portion sites, and you go into the second um, parasha or the second portion that's known as Noah, you will um, read, there's a, in the deeper levels of it, there's something known as the, the Yetzer the Yetzer um, Hara or the Yetzer Hora, Yetzer Hara. And the Yetzer Hara, it is the inclination to evil, the inclination to evil. Now, the complete teaching of this is somewhat a detailed teaching, but it's very interesting. It basically, to make it simple, is that human beings have either an inclination towards evil negativity 
or they have an inclination towards good positivity. And in this time of Noah, and these days are like the days of Noah, we're seeing an ever-increasing inclination towards evil. And in the Hebrew and Judaic teachings, this is known as the Yetzer Hara'a, or some say the Jezer Hora, in the, Angle, in the Anglicized um, uh, interpretation translation, they take the Y out and they put the J there. So instead of Yetzer, you understand, Hara'a, you understand, they will say the Jezer Hora. So if you look it up under those two different names, the older books would have the Jezer Hora. The newer, um, the newer information now is a little more accurate to what the actual Hebrew really states. And this means the inclination towards evil. So let's just think about that for a moment and say hallelujah. You understand? And say hallelujah for that because this means that this particular time, and remember this is before 2012. So there were certain rituals that certain uh, demonic worshipers, some evil doers, this is a particular time that they had a lot of things planned. And there's a couple of other seasons if you look up the, the Satanistic uh, calendar. They have certain calendar days. And it's interesting how these particular um, witches, Sabbaths, um, and calendar days, yes, they have their own, their own Sabbaths. And a lot of folks are into these things and don't even know what they are into. For example, Halloween. They think that Halloween is just an occasion for children to so-called dress up as a bunch of evil characters, so forth and so on, or witches and warlocks and goblins and goblins. It's just a fun thing. I mean, how programmed can you be that you don't recognize that this is exactly what the Bible says that occurred in the times of Noah, where it says that the imagi their imagination, let's get the, let's get the scripture right here, and let's go here to the scripture, to the evidence, you know what I'm saying, let's go to the evidence, this is why they have removed the Bible from schools, this is why they removed prayer from schools over the last 40 or so years, in the same period of time that the lost sheep, the lost black sheep, were wandering around the same old mountain of civil rights here in the wilderness of North America. This is at the same time when a lot of other, um, quote, civil rights were being promoted. For, first of all, we had the feminist movement. Then we had, like, the gay homosexual movement. Then we have the Wicca and the witchcraft movement. And every other so-called, quote, end quote, alternative movement has also been using the impetus of the lost sheep movement to basically put into a framework of rights and civil rights and love and, you know, give everybody the right to do whatever they want to. But then if we as Rastafari say we burn herbs sacramentally, they say it's a crime. Yet scripturally and historically, we can see that there is more criminality to alcoholism, to the, al the, the, the uh, 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 alcohol, you understand, than there is to the herb and the marijuana and, 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 the, and the icians and the incense. But you, you have to understand that for yourself, and we don't want to try to force anyone because water, you know, reaches its own level, you know, so people have to reach their own level of, of consciousness. And it's wrong, brothers and sisters, if you're trying to force one to get this, don't. Pray for them. Try to love them in Christos, but also try to move on and stay on, stay in the way, the truth, and, and the life yourself. Don't go too far out of the way, you understand, of that to try to convince another um, human being because they have free will and don't violate their free will thinking that you're doing good, because then you're just like the evildoers, basically. Now, here in Genesis chapter 6, when it speaks about the flood and the marriage of the Canaanites with the Sethites, the two branches of the family, so even though they're coming from one common ancestor, because of their um, respective inclinations, they broke down into two parts of the family. Some people say, well, why can't we all just get along? What they fail to recognize is that there are two 
natures and two inclinations in people, in each of us as individuals. And what we need is discernment, spiritual discernment, to be able to discern both in ourselves and in others what our inclination is. And then to decide whether we want to stay in that inclination or not because we have that free will. You see what I'm saying? But some people are enslaved to something and say, what can you do about it? What can you do about it? They are either willing or ignorant accomplices or willing or ignorant victims of programming, of trauma-based mind control. Because we have to recognize that we have not gotten to this point in human experience without a lot of trauma, such as the whole black and white issue. You understand? A lot of trauma-based mind control, you understand, and trauma-based programming has gone on to bring us to where we're at right now. But here 